The term ceiling pocket refers to a recessed section of the ceiling, typically enclosed within defined boundaries and elevated above the surrounding ceiling level. Depending on the type of sprinkler used, NFPA outlines specific conditions under which sprinklers may be omitted within a ceiling pocket. In this video, we'll explore how applying the ceiling pocket requirements can lead to significant cost savings in fire sprinkler system design. When a fire ignites in a compartment, hot gases and smoke rise to the ceiling due to buoyancy. As the fire grows, the increasing volume of these hot gases gradually fills the space from ceiling to floor. When the depth or volume of a ceiling pocket is minimal, sprinklers installed at the lower ceiling level are generally able to respond promptly and control the fire effectively. In contrast, a more substantial pocket can trap heat, delaying sprinkler activation and increasing the risk of uncontrolled fire growth. Now that we've covered how heat develops in a compartment, let's examine how this behavior influences NFPA requirements related to ceiling pockets. Where quick response standard spray or extended coverage sprinklers are installed throughout the compartment, NFPA 13 permits omitting sprinklers in a ceiling pocket, provided the lower level sprinklers can cover the entire floor area and all of the following conditions are met. The ceiling pocket must have non-combustible or limited combustible finishes. The ceiling pocket must have a total volume no greater than 1,000 cubic feet and a depth not exceeding 36 inches. For example, in the square-shaped room shown in this figure, let's assume the ceiling pocket has non-combustible finishes. The depth of the pocket can be calculated by subtracting the soffit height from the ceiling height, which gives us two feet. Then, by multiplying the length, width, and depth, we find the total pocket volume is 120 cubic feet. Now that the ceiling pockets finish, depth, and volume comply with NFPA requirements, the next step is to verify whether quick response sprinklers installed below the soffit can fully protect the floor area. If we assume the occupancy of this room is light hazard, then by applying the small room rule, it can be protected with just one standard spray sprinkler. It's important to note that if we had overlooked the ceiling pocket allowance, we would have needed to install at least two sprinklers to protect this room, especially since there is no suspended ceiling available for pendant sprinkler installation. Finally, it's important to note that when multiple ceiling pockets are located within the same compartment and are within 10 feet of each other, NFPA 13 requires their combined volume not to exceed 1,000 cubic feet. All other conditions such as the maximum depth, non-combustible or limited combustible finishes, and full floor coverage from the lower ceiling level must also be satisfied for sprinkler omission to be permitted. The ceiling pocket requirements for residential sprinklers share some similarities with those for standard spray and extended coverage sprinklers, but they also differ, particularly in the allowable pocket depth and volume. Both NFPA 13 and NFPA 13R specify that for residential sprinklers, a ceiling pocket must have a maximum depth of 12 inches and a volume not exceeding 100 cubic feet in order to be exempt from sprinkler protection. In NFPA 13D, there is no specified limitation on the depth of a ceiling pocket, and the combustibility of decorative interior finishes within the pocket is not considered a restricting factor. In all three standards, NFPA 13, 13R, and 13D, residential sprinklers installed at the lower ceiling level must be capable of providing coverage for the entire floor area. In this section, we'll explore how NSV CAD can assist in applying ceiling pocket requirements during sprinkler system design. We'll locate residential sprinklers in bedrooms 1 and 2 
in accordance with the 2025 edition of NFPA 13. Since these rooms do not have suspended ceilings, sidewall sprinklers will be used. By clicking inside bedroom 1, the software automatically calculates the depth and volume of the ceiling pocket. If the calculated values fall within the acceptable range, a notification window confirms that the ceiling pocket allowance can be applied. Assuming the pocket has non-combustible finishes, we click Apply. The software then automatically places a pendant sprinkler beneath the soffit. Next, we adjust the sprinkler position to find an optimal location that ensures full coverage of the room. During this step, we must also ensure that no shadow areas exceed the maximum allowable limits specified by NFPA 13. Now in bedroom 2, the ceiling pocket allowance is also applicable. If we place the pendant sprinkler under the north soffit, it fails to cover the southern portion of the room. However, by relocating the sprinkler beneath the west soffit, we achieve full coverage of the space with just one pendant sprinkler. Although ceiling pocket requirements are not conceptually complex in fire sprinkler system design, they can easily be overlooked in large projects with many rooms, leading to missed opportunities for system optimization. However, NSV CAD prevents this kind of oversight by automatically checking ceiling pocket depth and volume, ensuring compliance during design. I hope you find this video helpful. You can download the software from nsvsoft.net 